The next feature that I'd like to add is a way of fast forwarding the game. Because once we start a wave, we kind of just have to wait for the enemies to go around. So what I would like to do is be able to have a button that I can just hold down and it just doubles the speed at which everything happens. And this is going to need a new button. I'm going to go down to where the rest of my buttons are here and I'll just copy the restart button down. So the restart image now becomes, if we get rid of this, it's going to become fast underscore forward. And then I can create a button to match it. So down here, I'm going to copy down the restart button. No, actually, I'll copy down the begin button because it's going to be in the same position pretty much. I'll just change this. So from begin, this becomes fast underscore forward. Then the position is going to be plus 50 pixels and the Y coordinate will be 300. So that's okay. One thing I'm going to do differently here though is change this trigger at the end from true to false. This trigger determines whether the button is a single click or whether it is a click and hold. All of these ones up here are just single clicks. But the fast forward actually needs to be a click and hold. So as long as you're holding it down, the game is going to go twice as fast. Next, we need to incorporate this variable into our world. I'm going to go to the top of the world class and underneath the level, I will create a new variable called self.game underscore speed and I'll set it to one. Self.game underscore speed. There we go. Set to one. We can now use this variable together with this new button inside our main game loop. We'll go down to the section where we're spawning enemies. So just in here, inside the else statement, but before we actually spawn the enemies, add a comment to say fast forward option. And by default, I'm going to reset the world game speed to one. So I'll say that the speed is equal to one. And then I'm going to display the button, which is the fast underscore forward button. We'll call the draw method, just like all the other buttons, pass the screen. And if that button is clicked, then I want to change that world dot game speed variable to two. And let's just demo this out. So it's not actually going to speed anything up, but let's print this level variable out. So game underscore speed. If I run the game, we're going to see down here, once I start the round, it's saying one. But as soon as I click this button and hold it, it changes to two release it, it goes back to one. I need to now incorporate this variable inside of the way the turrets and the enemies move. So we'll get rid of this print statement. We don't need that anymore. And we can now go into the enemies. So we'll deal with the enemies first and we'll come back to the turrets. Go into the move method. And this is the section that actually controls the enemy's movement here. I'm already passing world as an argument to the move method. So and that means that I can call the game speed variable from here. And I'm just going to use it as a multiplier. I use self.speed in a couple of places here. I'm now going to wrap it in a set of brackets and I will multiply it by that game speed variable. I'll say world.game underscore speed. And then I can do the same thing and just replace the one down here. Now both of my speed variables are dependent on this game speed variable. So if I change this game speed variable globally, it's going to affect how fast the enemies move. If we now go back to our main game and run it, I'll begin the round so you can see him just strolling along at a usual speed. But as soon as I click and hold fast forward, it now moves faster. So this allows me to change the pace at which the game works. I now need to do the same thing to my turrets. So we go up to where we are actually processing the update methods. And the enemy group, well, that receives the world class. So that's why I didn't need to do anything there in terms of arguments and imports but the turret group doesn't. It only receives the enemies as an argument. I'm going to add a second argument, which is going to be the world. And then I go into my turret class update method, which is down here. So there's the enemy group that already receives as an argument. And I add a second one, which is world. The enemy speed is controlled by a speed variable, but turrets are a little bit different. They're not moving, but they do have a way of controlling how fast they shoot, which is based on their cooldown. It's this variable here. I can apply the same logic back to here. I can make this cooldown a variable that's dependent on the overall game speed. But now rather than multiplying it, I want to divide it by the game speed. So we'll say world.game underscore speed. Because the faster the game goes, the lower the cooldown. Now we can demo this. And first of all, I'm going to go into the enemy data 
and put this back to how it was before, where I have 15 weak enemies coming out at the beginning. If I launch this again, and I just put down a few turrets down here, and I start the game, I'm going to play around with the speed, and you can see how it varies. So this is a normal speed, and then when I fast forward, you can see that everything's now going twice as fast. The enemies move twice as fast, and the turrets respond to them twice as fast. Now we're kind of in the last stages of this game development. So what I'd like to do is just tidy up the display a little bit. We're showing some variables up here and these buttons are kind of positioned funnily. So let's just tidy all that up and create a much nicer looking display. I'll start off by creating a new function for this. I'll go to the top here where I'm creating my draw text function and underneath there's going to be a new function which is def display underscore data. This doesn't need any arguments and I'll start with a comment that says draw panel. I'll create a couple of rectangles which will be pg.draw.rect. They go onto the screen and the color is maroon. And then we need to define a few coordinates here. So first of all is going to be the start point x and y coordinates. So that's screen width 0. Then it's going to be the width which is the side panel and the height which is C dot screen height. Now let's go down and call this function. So before I go too far in developing it, we go into the draw section here and just above all these draw texts, which we're going to move shortly, we're going to call that function, which is display underscore data. And if I run this, I now have this panel over here. Now we can add on the next bit. What I'm going to do though, is I'm going to cut this text out of here because we're going to move it into this display data function anyway. So we'll stick it in here and then I'm going to, I'll move around and reorganize it properly in a second. But the next thing I want to do is put in another rectangle. So I'll copy this code down. And now this one is going to have a different color. It's going to be gray zero. So it'll be black. X and Y coordinates are the same. Width is the same, but the height I'm going to set to 400 pixels. And then I will set another argument here of the line weight. So if I set this to anything other than zero, then it's going to give me a hollow rectangle. If I call this again, now I've got this outline that kind of separates the two areas. So this is the area where my buttons and my GUI is going to be. And previously, to make sure that I could clear the screen entirely, I was running this line down here, screen.fill. I don't need that anymore, so I can get rid of this section, because now the entirety of the screen is being filled either by the map or by this new side panel that we've just created. The next thing I want to do is add in some more images. So we go up to here where I'm loading the images at the moment and just underneath the buttons, I will add a comment to separate them out. So this is going to be GUI and I'm just going to paste them in rather than having to type them all out. You already know how to load images by now. The images here are going to be used for the GUI. So they go into assets, images, GUI. And then in here, I've got a logo, a heart and a coin icon. And that's what I'm loading in here into each of these images. Now we can start to finalize our display data function. The first thing I want to do is say screen.blit and I want to pass in that logo. It's going to be at X coordinate screen width and the Y coordinate of 400. Let's run that. And now we've got a little logo down here. Then we'll add a comment here just to separate things out and this will be display the data. So the first part of this function was just to draw the panel and things like that. Now we want to actually output some of this information. The first thing is going to be the level. So I actually want to move this draw text function to be the first one. And I will add at the beginning of it, level, leave a space and then plus what I had there previously. I also need to reposition it so it's not sitting in the left hand side. The X coordinate will be screen width plus 10 pixels and the Y coordinate is 10. Now let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's much better. We've got a little display here. Now let's move the health and the money over as well. But in addition to just showing out the text, I want to draw in those little icons. So we're going to put screen.blit in between these draw text functions. The first one will be screen.blit heart image and the coordinates will be c.screen width plus 10 pixels and Y coordinate is 35. And then we can leave this draw text for the health in the same place. We don't need to add any text at the beginning, but I just need to update the X and Y coordinates. And this one, again, I'm using screen width as a reference because that's kind of where the game window ends, or rather the map area ends, and then we move on to this side panel. And then it's 40 for the Y coordinate. 
Now we're going to blit the next one. So I can just copy this down as well. Now instead of heart image, it's going to be coin image. Oops, coin image. The coordinates will be plus 10 and this one moves down to 65 pixels on the Y axis. And finally, the draw text will leave money as it is, but we just need to update X and Y coordinates. Let's just copy this down from here so that we don't have to keep retyping it all. So the X coordinate is fine, Y coordinate goes to 70. Run it again, and now it looks a lot nicer. So we've got level one, a little heart here to indicate how much health we've got, coins, and so on. At the moment though, the buy turret isn't sitting centrally positioned. And there's actually a reason for that, which is that I want to show the price next to it. So let's go down to where we're drawing this button at the moment, which should be somewhere down here. All right, it's this section here. So draw buttons, button for placing turrets. So before I actually get into that code, I will add another little comment here to say for the turret button, show cost of turret and draw the button. Now I just want to draw the text, which corresponds to how much this turret costs and show the little coin icon. I'm just gonna paste this in again. You've seen me type this just a few minutes ago. So we call the draw text function. We pass in the buy cost, which is how much it costs to buy a new turret. And these are the X and Y coordinates. Then I'm gonna blend that same coin image just at these new X and Y coordinates. If we take a look, now it looks a bit nicer. So we've got this price next to the buy turret. What I'd also like to do, if I put down a turret and select it, I get the upgrade turret button. Let's do the same thing here as well. We'll put the price next to that one. And that happens just slightly below. It's this section here. We say that as long as we're able to upgrade, i.e. the turret isn't already maxed out, then we show the upgrade button. Well, just before we show the upgrade button, and again, I'm just gonna paste this in here. We're gonna show the cost of the upgrade button, and it's done with this draw text function. These are the X and Y coordinates, so screen width plus 215 and 195 for the Y coordinate. And then we draw that coin image just next to it as well. If we take a look now, place down a turret, select it. And now we've got these kind of lined up nicely on the X axis and they're lined up horizontally and vertically with their own buttons. I'd previously messed around with some of these variables like health, for example, is set to one just because we were testing something out. But now that we're almost done with the game, Let's set all this back to how it should be. So health should be 100 and total levels needs to be 15. That's how many levels I've got in this game. Now the very last thing that I want to do just to finish this game off is add some sound effects. I deliberately leave that to the very end because otherwise they kind of get in the way of the tutorial recording basically. So we need to first of all load the sound effects in and we do this in the same way as all other assets. We go up to the top. So I've got my images here. So these are my button images, my GUI images, and underneath that, in a separate section, we had a comment to say load sounds. And it's going to be, well, first of all, you name it, you assign it to a variable. It'll be shot underscore fx pg dot mixer dot sound. And then the file location, which is going to be assets forward slash audio forward slash shot dot wav. And this particular sound effect was a little bit loud. So I actually want to reduce the volume. I'll say shot set underscore volume to 0.5. So it'll be 50% of the original volume. Now we need to take the sound effect and we need to pass it over to our turret. So as soon as we create a new turret, which is done in this create turret function that I just scrolled past. So it's down here. When we create a new turret, we want to pass that sound effect into it. So we'll add it as an argument and then we go into the turret class and in the constructor, we need to receive it as an argument. Shot FX. Then we make sure to assign it to a self variable. So I'll just do it down here underneath where I calculate the center coordinates and stuff like that. Add a comment to say shot sound effect. I'll say self dot shot underscore FX is equal to shot FX. And now lastly, we just need to play this sound effect. And that's going to happen when we pick a target to shoot at. So this pick target method is where that happens. Right at the end of it is where we look at whether the distance to the enemy is less than the turret's range. And if it is, that becomes our target and we even do damage to it at that point. So just after that, before we break out of this, we'll add a comment to say play sound effect 
and to play it we just call the name of that sound effect which is shot underscore fx and call the play method on it now all that's left to do is just test this out place down a few turrets and begin the round And there you have it, a complete tower defense game made from scratch with multiple enemy types, numerous waves and upgradable turrets. A lot of work went into this tutorial, so if you found this useful, then please leave a like and consider subscribing because it really helps to support the channel. And if you have ideas for any specific tutorials that you want to see in the future, then let me know below in the comments. Thanks for watching.